For the last 20 years, we've seen an unprecedented rise in housing prices. And it's this rise that saved the bacon of many first-time property developers. But in the summer of 2007, everything changed. And amateur developers on the property market for the first time found themselves on an altogether bumpier ride. There's so many people after our property that we were sort of zumping each other trying to get hold of it. We assumed that house prices would just go up. We just had no idea that they would ever go down. Because you buy a property with debt, you can find yourself in negative equity. So not only have you lost the money that you put in, but you can actually owe more. 13 million of us are expecting our property to provide us with an income in retirement. That's a very concentrated risk. Space to add value is a basic principle of property developing. Tonight's novice developers are digging down, always one of the most expensive and therefore riskiest ways to make money, even in the good times. You don't have a little bit of water, you've got a pond down here. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a survey done for your water? We yes. had a valuation survey done for the mortgage. So you didn't have a survey done? In the basement, there is no foundation, so we've got some underpinning to do. And here, dry rot, woodworm, the lot. It's late 2007, and the once buoyant housing market is starting to slow. Even so, like millions of others, data consultant Chris Whedon and his wife Jules, a bank manager, hope property developing could help provide a pension. They think they found the answer with this two-bedroomed, 400-year-old cottage in Sheer, Surrey. But my, does it have problems. Not only is it falling apart at the seams, it's also absolutely tiny. But with no loft to convert and planning won't allow an extension, there's only one option left. We bought the house with specific intention of turning the cellar into a kitchen and changing the layout. If we start digging and we come across problems, then we're stuffed. That's our profit down the drain. And that's scary stuff because when you start digging down, flooding, undermining the foundations and the lack of natural light are all expensive problems that can easily come your way. You've never done anything like never this? Never done anything like this, no. Did you have a survey done before you bought it? We yes. had a valuation survey done for the mortgage. So you didn't have a survey done? Not a, <laughs> not a structural survey, We've no. also been next door and it's in very good condition and uh, they reassured us that ours would be as well. <laughs> hang on, so, hang on a minute. <laughs> so, so next door was in good condition. No, no, so this will be all right as well. Because it's built the same time. That's a load of absolute <laughs> hogwash. <laughs> We're taking a flyer. Yeah, you are. Next door may have converted their basement, but this project still feels like a major flyer to me too. Especially when the housing market's starting to become jittery. And then you take a peek at the figures. They bought the house for £346,000. There's a £115,000 budget, which is very small for such a big job. And the target sale of £550,000 would break the ceiling price for similar properties in the area. On these numbers, they'd make a good £89,000 profit. But I think even without a downturn in the market, these margins are dangerously tight. And how long is it going to be till this is finished? Uh, between 8 and 12 weeks. It's a tough call. I mean, I'd put 16 weeks on this as a realistic time scale. There's going to have to be some pretty amazing project management to make this happen in nine weeks. And the reality is you've bought a 400-year-old cottage that's semi-derelict. This is your first development, and you're doing all of this in a flat market with an optimistic resale price, hoping to make £89,000. Yep. Yep. Crikey. And it's not just their schedule and resale that's ambitious. This is one big development. The cottage is set out over four storeys. On the top floor, there are two bedrooms. With another bedroom and bathroom below. Underneath, there's an unusual arrangement of a ground floor living area and a lower ground floor kitchen and WC, which provides access to the basement underground. 
Chris and Jules rightly want to knock down the internal walls to open up the small lounge, and then turn the lower ground into an appealing garden room. But it's the dark basement below where the plans go awry. The idea is to excavate down to get enough head height to put a new kitchen diner in, only there won't be a single window to the outside world. So this is where the nuts and bolts of this development is, really. It's, I mean, you've got a huge amount of work to do down here to turn it into a kitchen. It's a lovely big space. I know you're digging the floor out yeah. so you get proper head height, which clearly you need to do. But the big problem with your plan is that it has no natural light. Yes. yes. And I think that's a, that's a huge flaw in it. But I have got a suggestion. Take the floor back and open out the whole of this section. The big challenge when you're converting a basement is to draw in natural light. Here, I would move the WC down to the rear of the new kitchen and knock through the wall to the basement area to bring in as much daylight as possible. What do you think of it as an idea? I can see the benefits to it, but it's really just sitting down with a piece of paper and really working out as mm. to uh, whether it would improve the selling price. Maybe even if it costs £5,000, it's certainly worth doing. It just will move this development from feeling like it's a little bit claustrophobic to giving it space to breathe. It'll definitely give us the wow factor, yes. which is what we're looking for. Yes. We've got to make a decision in the next 24 yeah. hours, because uh, they're digging up the cellar tomorrow, so they can start the work, but if we're going to be doing some massive changes, we've got to make a decision yeah. now. So we've got to switch our builder tonight, basically. Yeah. 33 miles away in East London's trendy Bethnal Green, meet graphic designer Pete and interior designer Louise. Newly married, this couple are hoping that Pete's own flat will secure a future income for them. For the last 10 years, Pete's lived on the ground floor of this converted upholstery shop. And like Chris and Jules in Shear, this couple think that it's the basement which will give them the greatest return. It's going to make a great living space when we're done, but I've just been chucking rubbish down there for the last 10 years. But it's, it's a big job, the whole thing's a big job. Lou's got a bit of experience, but I've... I've never done anything like this before and I'm terrified, frankly. Pete's basement is so big it will double their living space and make them some desperately needed cash. We don't live together yet. We both work from home, so we both need our own studio space, really. And uh, at the moment, my flat's not big enough and this place isn't either, so... Um, we need to move on and find a yeah. bigger place. Well, that would make the marriage last for years yeah. if you carry on like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, did it take a long time to persuade the landlord to sell it to it's you? It's about then? six years, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you, so you must have been pleased. Very, it? very pleased, yeah. I got a very good price for it as well, so... What was that? It was 150000 uh, And you've done well already, I I think so, yeah. There's possibly as much as 100000 on it, just as it is, if we were to sell it today, so... Are you not tempted to cut and run? Nah. <laughs> Pete bought his flat in April 2007, and unlike lots of people buying at the time, he got a real bargain. It's now February 2008, and with the UK market cooling, they could do a lot worse than walking away with a clear £100,000 gross profit. But this couple have other ideas. They're hoping for a trouble-free three-month development costing £90,000. And they want to let the property for £500 a week. In theory, that's a very respectable 11% return on their investment. But if they encounter problems with this ambitious conversion, that could slash their return very quickly indeed. And this is quite a challenge, doing this. Yeah. Do you have any experience or idea how stressful developments often are? <laughs> no, this is our first. What if it doesn't work? <laughs> we get <a> divorce. <laughs> of course it will work. <laughs> Pete and Louise may be laughing now, but they couldn't have chosen a riskier time to be attempting such a complex first development. They could easily be digging a very big hole for themselves. By the time tonight's developers had started digging out their basements, economists were still debating whether a recession was on its way. Whatever the forecasts, one thing was certain, the housing market had now stalled. 
But for Pete and Louise Morder in Bethnal Green, East London, there's no going back. They're hoping to secure their future by developing Pete's old upholstery shop into a two-bed rental property by converting one massive basement. Crikey, you've already started. Yes, we have. So, um, so what's this? Is this the swimming pool? Yeah. <laughs> I'm training for the Olympics. It's not really a noise you want from a hole in the ground, is it? <laughs> Great. It's a massive space you've it got is, down yeah. here. And it goes right the way back, so that if you knock through at the end, you'd get light to outside in yeah. the yard at the back. Yeah. But it's a lot of digging, and there's a lot of water you've got to get rid of. It's true. I think the cost of raising this floor will come in at quite a lot less than digging out down here. You wouldn't have to pinch more than a couple of feet, which will still give you a reasonable head height. We did comparative quotes, and... Um... They came in roughly the same. Yeah. The problem with digging down is you never quite know what you're going to hit until you start doing it. So I think if you want to keep on top of costs, it's probably best to raise the floor because that's a quantifiable job someone can see and, and they can give you a price for. Well, there's a lot less unknowns. It's not only digging out this huge space that could hurt the finances. There's also Pete and Lou's idea for the layout. Downstairs in the basement, they're planning to dig out 15 tonnes of earth to create just two bedrooms. There'll be a master with ensuite at the back, leading to an oversized storage area, and second bedroom to the front. Upstairs is little more than a glorified revamp with a kitchen and shower area leading through to a large open plan living space. I think there's a way of upping their total rent by as much as 30%. And your priority with this development really needs to be to get the rental value up, and to get the rental value up as much as you can, you need to get three bedrooms in here. I think for the sake of it, it will be worth doing. It's certainly something to consider, isn't it? I mean, we need to look at the plans and the size of the rooms. Yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced by that at all, and really. I, I, I still think that a good open living space will be quite valuable to people that want to, you know, okay. live around here. Pete and Louise could be missing one very lucrative trick. Upstairs, the first thing I'd add is a large bedroom and bathroom at the back, while keeping the lounge in the light front area. Basements are great for kitchens and theirs would fit directly underneath. Crucially, there would be room for two more bedrooms and bathrooms to the rear. We wanted to keep the feel of you know, the, the, the commercial property, really, with the high ceiling and the big windows at the back and keep this as a nice open-plan living space. I think the important thing when you make the decision, though, is to come back to why you're doing this. Yeah. It's all very well if you've kept the integrity of the building, but you still can't own a nice place together and live together. I think we need to, we need to discuss and not be so emotionally attached to it and tr make a decision whether you want to really carve this place up into three bedrooms or two. The bigger the basement, the more potential in the conversion. And Pete and Louise's is one big basement. But they could be throwing away its potential by not getting the right ratio of bedrooms to living space. It's intense talking to Sarah um, and being challenged about everything that you've held quite dear for quite a long time. Even if it is just a shop. Even if it is just a shop. We've never really wanted to put three bedrooms in here, but obviously for profitability, then it is a sensible idea. I'm not convinced as yet that that's what I want to do. An hour and a quarter away in Shear, Chris and Jules Whedon are on day one of their development. The house is a 400-year-old wreck, but they haven't done a structural survey and have a mere nine weeks to do the job. They originally planned a windowless basement kitchen though I've suggested it will be relatively easy to punch a large opening into the sizeable garden room to bring in some natural light. Having spoken to Tony, our builder, about Sarah's idea, we know it's going to look good, so that's what we've decided to do. There's still no escaping the fact that this is a precarious development. The building's ancient, the margins are super tight, and they're digging down into the unknown. Well, that's it. That's all it is. In the basement, uh, we found that there is, is no foundation, um, so we've got some underpinning to do. Um, and obviously, there's cost implications as well. And here, 
this timber is completely rotted away. Dry rot, woodworm, the lot, which is a main support for the top of the staircase. All these bits and pieces need to be addressed and need to be addressed quickly. To resolve these problems, it's going to cost a whopping extra £20,000. And that's before Chris and Jules factor in the cost of the basement kitchen. We decided to go for the local uh, supplier for the kitchen, so it's a bespoke, high quality and an individual kitchen. And it will give us the wow factor we're looking for. So despite the additional unbudgeted cost of repairs, they're still going to tan on the kitchen. It's a nice finish. It's a crazy expense that's not lost on Tony the Builder. They're not thinking about the costs. They could have a cheaper kitchen, you know. Granite worktop's fine, but cheaper carcasses. They're causing the cost to spiral. They could save at least £10,000 by getting an off-the-shelf model. And with the market already starting to drop off, I honestly believe Chris and Jules could end up making no profit at all. In Bethnal Green, Pete and Louise are starting out on their massive basement conversion. Yeah, we decided to take Sarah's advice raising the joists rather than digging down simply because of the risk. We thought that would be safer. I mean, we were worried about the ceiling height, but I think, I think it'll work. I think it'll be fine. Pete and Louise are potentially saving thousands by raising the floor rather than excavating into the unknown. That's one of the big decisions out of the way. I spoke to six local estate agents and they were all of the opinion that Sarah's idea of having three bedrooms would increase the market value by up to £60,000. Um, and rental value by possibly £100 a week. So um, there's something we couldn't sniff at, really. The extra money could really help Pete and Louise secure their future. So far, they seem to be going with my ideas. But they're both creative designers, and a week later, they're not as convinced by other suggestions. I think we felt that it would be lovely to have a really beautiful kitchen that you walk in off the street into. It would be more conventional to have the sitting room upstairs and go downstairs to a kitchen, breakfast, dining space with a table and it's sort of more normal layout. As it stands at the moment, we're quite happy with yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I, I really like having the, the idea of having the kitchen up here. It's just, you know, I think we've got our hearts set on that now. However hard you try, the levels of natural light will always be compromised in a basement. And when space is tight, it is kitchens that are most suitable to being underground. More often than not, they're artificially lit. They also have plenty of surfaces that can be made reflective to lift the level of brightness. A palette of light tones can further enhance a fantastic subterranean selling feature. I mean, this is undeniably darker down here, isn't it, than upstairs? Yeah. Um, it makes more sense to have the kitchen in the darker space. We've thought long and hard over it, and we've got to make decisions and go with them now, otherwise it's not going to get done. So I think we've made our minds up with yeah. it, haven't we? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> in sheer, with full-time IT and banking careers, Chris and Jules are finding it almost impossible to give the basement project their full attention. And that means they're practically never on site at the same time as the builders. Yeah, I'll, I'll be on site over the weekend so I can see what you've done, but I just can't make it during the day uh, this week. Simply sorting out the weak foundations and rotten timbers has taken them over halfway through their unrealistic schedule and the structural work to open up the basement is only just beginning. There's masses to do in a very short period, and it's a crucial time to be properly managing the site. You have given yourself a very, very tight schedule, and you've both got full-time jobs and you're hardly on site at all, and, and it's also running very fast. And do you feel like you're totally in control of this site? Not totally in control of this site. Tony is the builder, but he's also the project manager. So it's a situation that we have had to put a lot of trust in him. I just worry that, that having a very, very short schedule, not being around much, 
having to finish it in that time or being left with no builder. Decisions need to be made and, and things get rushed through. And the, the problem with too, rushing it too much is that to go back and think, oh, no, we shouldn't have done it like that. It's a bit late then, really. Most of the decisions are obvious. Well, let's hope so, because uh, because if they're not obvious and they're wrong, it's, I mean, it's your money on the line, isn't it? We've had lots of meetings with the builder before the project started, so we're confident that he's thinking along the same lines as we are. I have no clear direction. It's, it's kind of ad hoc. I'm doing what needs to be done because I haven't seen the client for, for a week now. To make money from developing in today's difficult market, you have to get the basics 100% right, including the project management. But Chris and Jules are getting that very, very wrong. In Bethnal Green, Pete and Louise are on site every day, and they're well on the way to dividing up the upstairs to create that all-important third bedroom. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really feel like a upholsterers anymore now. I don't think it did from the moment we sort of, we made it a, a three-bedroom project. Don't regret what we're doing for an instant. Now I've, I've got a, a much bigger life now, you know, with Lou and um, lots of stuff to do, so. Financing that life relies on fitting two more good bedrooms and bathrooms downstairs in the rear half of the basement conversion. Lou's been working on the design, but plans can be very hard to visualise, so it's a good idea to clearly map them out. So this is a corridor into a shower room here, and then going through here, this is a bathroom, and then through here into one bedroom, and then down here through into another bedroom. To fit the beds in, you're going to have to have the pillows here, and the bed will take up all of this space. If you want to open the window or sleep on the other side of the bed, you've got to climb across the bed like this to open the window and, and to clamber back again, which I mean, it's hardly sort of luxury living, really, is it? I think there is a way around it. The bedrooms are too small and the bathrooms are too big. The simple solution is to swap the layout so the bathrooms take the hit on space and not the bedrooms. So you'd end up with two much better bedrooms with this layout. On the face of it, I, th I, I think this could work. I think you're right about having one um, or two larger bedrooms rather than, rather than that one large one and two small ones. I'm sure we get a better price for property and that's all we're interested in. Yeah. <laughs> it might not be easy, but slowly and surely, these two are coming around to a developer's way of thinking. In Sheer, Chris and Jules are still only managing to get down on site at weekends when the builders aren't around. The job is carrying on without them and with just four weeks to go, the majority of the work is still to be done. Not many people own the house, I mean, they've not been by, but, you know, if, if it was my project personally, I'd have a lot more input into it. Chris and Jules seem to be oblivious to what's going on here. And it's stressing me because I'm just making all the decisions. They've now got this wish list of, you know, knocking out structural walls, log burners, oak floors, specialist kitchens, things like that. And, and we're 20 grand over budget. If I don't see them soon, don't have a meeting, don't discuss the costs and things like that, I'll be pulling my men off the job. In sheer, Chris and Jules are struggling to combine their IT and banking careers with managing their basement conversion. They're so rarely on site that they're not just worryingly behind schedule, but completely out of touch with the changes being made. Wow! <laughs> Where's my house gone? <laughs> Tony's been working on the basement conversion with a minimum of guidance, and when Jules gets down there, it's a million miles from what she'd imagined. I thought um, that the staircase would be slightly wider, Tony. So coming today, seeing it um, this size, I was sort of slightly disappointed because the, the light issue is going to be a key feature of this room. For me to put a bigger staircase in, yeah. you, you, would, you would just have no room yeah. for a toilet, you know, okay. no, no room for units, no room for a boiler, yeah. no room for your fridge. Exactly, you know, so, no. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of a compromise. Tony has built a huge cupboard for the boiler, cutting in half what should be a fabulous eight-foot-wide open staircase. 
The WC is now on the other side, further obstructing the view. So what was supposed to add light and space has suddenly become very dark and pokey. Aha! Uh -huh. But it must make it terribly dark down there, doesn't it? Let's go down. So you've built a loo here and then you've boxed in the other side to have a boiler and you've ended up with a space that was going to be open and light, shutting it back in again. How did it get so far? I think it was just really just creeping along. Uh, and as we turn up on site, things have been done. It's our fault for not being on site often enough. I mean, there's always a way around any problem. You just have to persevere with it. And uh, for the sake of a few thousand pounds, you could move that boiler onto the side wall, which would take up less space, and and lose all the, the joinery around it, and then you'd open this back up again. You've lost so much space that I think that you need to lose the downstairs loo altogether. If we don't have the toilet there, then does it affect the property? I mean, it's not ideal, but you're so compromised on space down here yes. now, I don't think you can afford to have a downstairs loo. I want to go with what you're saying, because the idea of letting more light in is going to be the best thing to, for this project. Um, and to get the wow factor we were looking for originally, so um, it's just we just need to tell Tony. I need to tell Tony. <laughs> Over in Bethnal Green, Pete and Louise are reworking the layout downstairs to make sure they get two good-sized bedrooms. But the schedule is starting to slip. In fact, they're just two weeks off their deadline. The problem is, these two designers can't stop tinkering with the plans. This time, it's the stairs. If it was up to me, we would have had this job done in and out eight weeks. But because of these changes, you know, it slowed us down quite a bit and delayed us. Pete and Louise should have decided on their stairs weeks ago. The way that a staircase is designed can make a huge difference in basement conversions. I think I found just the place in West London to show them why. Now this is the perfect example of what I feel you should be trying to create. Mm -hmm. You know, you could envisage that staircase in our house, couldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. The stairs sit flush against the external walls of the property in an open design that allows as much light as possible into the downstairs. What's great about this is the simplicity of just having the wooden steps and the plain glass means that your eye isn't drawn away from the important thing, which is the great open spaces and, and the living areas. You're not concentrating on the stairs themselves. We've had a look at lots of different kinds of staircases and really this is the sort of thing that, that we're after if, if we can get it within the budget. How much is in your budget for the stairs? We're looking on the outside at 10 grand. I think you should be able to achieve something like this for that sort mm -hmm. of figure. In the big scheme of things, for really nice contemporary stairs, this is at the, the cheaper end of things. It's definitely um, the direction I think we want to go in. Yeah, definitely. Good news for the stairs, then. Pete and Louise can now get cracking on a design. I think it looks really, really good. Yeah, it's beautiful. A week later, the front of the flat gets a facelift. <laughs> yeah, well done. And when at last the staircase arrives, the end is in sight. They're finally getting on top of their first ever development. There's been site meetings before work and site meetings after work. And at weekends, it's been a lot of work. <laughs> Enormous amounts of stress, really, that I wasn't expecting. Third bedroom and bathroom and the staircase have definitely taken us way over our original budget, but then... Um, we upped the specification of the staircase. We were up the, spe the spec of the whole flat, yeah. really. I think we can be really happy with the result. Yeah. It'll be worth it in the end. In sheer, Chris and Jules may be three weeks over schedule, but they're doing the courageous thing. The boiler is being moved onto a side wall and the WC has been taken out. It feels like a large kitchen as opposed to a sort of a squashed up kitchen. Yeah, galley kitchen yeah. before, that's what it was going to end up yeah. like. Whereas now this is open plan, very much open plan. With all the delays, it's now crucial that they get finished as quickly as possible. The bathroom is the last big job on this development. I found out the other day that um, 
it's actually a cast iron roll top bath, which is a bit of a nightmare. It weighs 115 kilos on its own. I've now got to reinforce the floor, reinforce the oak beams that run from side to side, because by the time that's, that's got a grown person and it's full of water, it's going to weigh best part of a, a quarter of a tonne, probably more than a quarter of a tonne. That's a lot of weight for, for this very flimsy floor. Don't to give you a hand. <laughs> <laughs> the bath is so heavy it has to be winched into place. <laughs> it looks really light. Hanging doesn't it? look like any weight at all. It takes some major manoeuvring, but finally the bath is hovering in position. Pull, pull. I love my raw top bath, um, but I'm really worried about it because Tony the builder has um, told me that he thinks it's too big and he's also said that there's not going to be enough room between the bath and the sink and the bath and the toilet. Um, and I'm really worried that that might be the case. I think the bath needs to go, and it's not just because of its size. Wow. Uh, so why have you got a massive Victorian bath in here, then? We didn't want a modern bathroom suite in a 17th century cottage. So you've got a 17th century cottage, and then a couple of hundred years later, the bathroom. You're just sort of mixing, matching old things. It's any old thing. Old, old things, yeah. As 1980s, opposed to modern... does that count? 1950s? When, no. When's your cut off for old? <laughs> <laughs> Victorian, we'll stop at Victorian. But what's wrong with it? Yeah. What's wrong with it? The sort of buyers who are around here, I think uh, this is an old cottage, it's really sweet, but I think they are savvy, design conscious buyers, and I think a sleek and contemporary bathroom would absolutely fit the bill in terms of your potential market. My concern is that you need to do what's right for this house, not uh, have an interior that you just personally like. There is a little bit of us in there, but it looks good. So there's no swaying on the bathroom? No. No. In Bethnal Green, it's seven months since Peter and Louise started their epic basement conversion. And wow, what a conversion it is. Their old upholstery shop has been completely retailored. Peter and Louise were sure they wanted the kitchen in the front room, but what a kitchen it is. They've combined dark wood and shiny steel and spotlights for a really high-end finish. Perhaps even a little too high-end for a hard-wearing rental. It's utterly beautiful. I've got to say, you must be um, very pleased with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we're pretty smug, yeah. It's, uh, it's come out all right. It's still going to be a little bit annoying and say so that I, I, I think it's a bit odd that the kitchen is here. When you come through the door here, you kind of come in to this great space, and it's just a bit odd that it's a kitchen rather than a, a living room. Do you, are you pleased with it here? I, I yeah. love it. I love Easy. it. Yeah. Yeah. So no second thoughts? No. No, no, no regrets at all. Maybe not. No. no. I mean, it is lovely and light. The big question mark always was, though, what's it like downstairs with the sitting room downstairs? Is it quite dark down there? No, you get plenty of light down there as well. It's, uh, Do it's you? worked out just fine. Mm, let's see. <laughs> The stairs down continue the wood steel theme, with glass panels adding an extra dimension of openness. The front of the cavernous old basement is the property's biggest transformation. Again, the styling is immaculately contemporary, but does it pass muster as a living room? And the glass lets as much light as you possibly could get down here, but I think that raising the ceiling has made a massive difference in the sense of space. And I still think it's a shame it's not the kitchen down here, but it does improve it dramatically, having this higher ceiling. Stacking the two living areas to the front means room for three bedroom suites rather than the two Pete and Louise had planned, adding the kind of major value you need to compete in a tough market. The budget rose from 90,000 to 112,000 pounds, which isn't bad looking at the spec. The big question now is whether the market, which changed beyond all recognition during their development, will provide anywhere near the 500 pounds a week rent they were hoping for. On the rentals market, I think they've probably overspent. I think if you were doing this up to sell on, certainly the specification would be very good. 
Very clever raising the floor and maximising the height in here. Most people who are trying to sell can't, as we all know, uh, which means they're flipping over to the rental side, which unfortunately is saturating the market. Simple supply and demand dictates that everyone's going to be scrapping for a tenant, thus the prices will, will come down as well. Three bedrooms, three bathrooms, I think this will certainly appeal to the professional rental market. In the current market, I'd hope to achieve around £485 a week. I would give this property a rental value of £500 per week. I'm very confident that we could achieve a figure of £550 per week. We've had three agents around to value it for rental, and they've valued it at £485 a week, £500 a week, and £550 a week. That's great. It really is great. I mean, we, we've worked so hard yeah. for this, and, uh, and I'm really glad that we've got pretty much what we were looking mm -hmm. well, a little better than we were hoping for. So you've done incredibly well. You bought very well, which is the key. And obviously, you did this to rent. Do you know how much it would be worth now if you were to put it on the market? We could guess uh, around, I don't know, 380, something like that. Well, we have had three agents in also to value it, just to see what they said. And uh, they came in at 385, 420 and 450,000. Mm -hmm. That's 50 grand shy of half a million. That's a yeah. ridiculous amount of money. <laughs> <laughs> So you'd make a profit, if you sold it, of between £123,000 and £188,000. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd be better off selling it now than, than renting it out and then selling it in a couple of years' time when someone's ruined your beautiful finish. Oh, God, that's a difficult one. Um, if we could get 450000 for it by selling it straight away, um, then... I'm going to put you on the spot. Which do you think? Sell or rent? <laughs> she said, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a sell. <laughs> Brilliant. What flat? <laughs> a while later, Pete and Louise decide not to sell and are now renting it out for £540 a week. That's a good 10% return. But personally, in today's market, I would have cut and run. But in Sheer, it's a different story, as the fall in house prices threatens Chris and Jules's development dream. When we started the project, there was no indication that the market was going to crash. Chris and Jules are finally putting the finishing touches to their basement conversion. Since they started this project, house sales in Surrey have dropped by 47%. But this couple are still convinced their development has got what it takes to beat the prevailing property prices. There's not a great deal of property for sale here, and it's such a sought-after village that um, houses go pretty quickly when they do come on the market. So we're hoping that even though this current situation with the market, um, we should still be able to sell it fairly quickly. And if first impressions will do it, then this house has a real chance. And inside isn't half bad either. You'd never believe it was the same tiny living room. But it's downstairs where the major success is. In this development, Chris and Jules made a lot of expensive mistakes but they persevered to achieve a great opening into what was once the basement, even if they did blow the budget on the kitchen. This is just fabulous. When you think about what this used to be, a damp and dark and dingy cellar with low head height and, and no natural light at all, and this is... This is a transformation. We're really pleased that we took your advice on making it wider because there's more light in and of course the views of the garden are great now. Two lessons we learned from this. One, clear, accurate, concise plans. And two, project managing it and being on site more often. Mm. Those two things would have meant that we wouldn't have had to have undone some things. Upstairs, they've kept the bedrooms clean and simple, which is the right thing to do with the limited space on offer. Although the bathroom perhaps feels a little bit too elaborate. So 
So you stuck to your guns and decided that you're going to stay with the roll top Victorian bath. Are you pleased with the end result? Really pleased, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I think it's... Um, I think it's a slight hotchpotch of styles. This is, this is based on your own bathroom at home, is it? Very similar, yes. yes. My God, blimey, that's... <laughs> no, but it swivels. It swivels. What, your head? No, no, yeah, no. your head does, yes. But no, the actual... Uh, that does move. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> but watch out for the water. <laughs> OK, so bear in mind I'm five foot five. Yes. Which is not, which is not tremendously tall, even with it swivelling. Yes. But you're not meant to stand underneath, it's just meant to sort of shower you and then you've got the hands set. But I mean, otherwise... So you've got to stay within this circle, yeah. i.e. here, and then you've got to get it... You've got to get underneath it, but all swivelling onto you with the curtain around you like this, yeah? We're looking at selling it to a small, thin person. She's <laughs> <laughs> not pregnant. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> This is certainly not an economy bathroom. Together with the kitchen and a raft of building problems, did Chris and Jules manage to get anywhere near their original budget? You started out expecting to spend about 115000 on this development, and you've had a few problems along the way. How much did you end up spending? Near 141, just under that. Right. This was a full refurbishment with structural work. I think it was always a bit unrealistic, your schedule and your money on this. From the outset, Chris and Jules have relied on outperforming the local market to make a profit. But given the amount they've spent, they would now need to do that just to break even. And with buyers so thin on the ground, things are looking very tricky. This really is the feature of the, uh, the property. This is a fantastic room. It adds significantly to the saleability and to the value, probably adding fifty to sixty thousand pounds. Good room. Main selling point of the house, I'd say. With a contemporary bath, you might have got the bath in one end and have a separate shower cubicle at the other end, which would have been better. <laughs> I would value this property at four hundred and ninety-five thousand pounds. In the current market, I'd value this property at five hundred thousand pounds. We have had two valuations, and those valuations have come in at 495 and 500,000. Right. So, if you took the lowest valuation, that would be an 8,000 pound profit, and if you took the highest valuation, that would be a 13,000 pound profit. What do you reckon? That? I mean, it's a profit. Not enough. No, no, no I don't like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> It is, it is. It's not enough for the amount of effort that's put in. I'm disappointed, actually. I really thought we would sort of head towards the 550. I think the difficulty is, is that there's this £500,000 stamp duty threshold. Mm. I'm just not sure it's quite good enough to be able to take that leap above half a million pounds. But if I was you, I would put it on at 499950 Chris and Jules decide against this and put the house on the market for £549,000. But six months later, with house prices still falling and no interest from buyers, they decide to rent it out for £1,600 a month. We're in property development for money, and after the amount of time, pain and effort that we put into that, we were not going to walk away with £13,000. We're not put off by doing any, any future developments because my passion is interior design and um, developing houses. So this is just um, a hiccup in the overall plans and so we'll just wait and wait for the prices to go up and um, then move on. Luckily, the positive of recession is that interest rates go down. So with the rental income that we're getting from it, we're in a very comfortable position, so it's still winning. And when we sell at the right price, we'll win again. Basement conversions are one of the trickier ways to add square footage. So it's more important than ever to get the basics right. You need to start with a good solid set of figures, have good project management and make sure that you've done your homework. Because anything less and in today's market, digging down can be an easy way to bury your profit. Next week, our property developers' dreams of making a profit from two massive conversions face the dawn of a decimated housing market. Everything went from fabulous to rock bottom overnight. And there the bubbles burst, that's it, it's finished.